This small stream in a busy urban park is the Lime Brook. Years ago, it was moved away from its natural course and straightened so the natural bed was replaced by rubble, refuse and sand. It still supports life though, although the iconic wild trout that are recovering in the Trent system are still absent from here. But there are some people who would like to improve the health of the brook. In this first short film, you can see how a straight drainage channel is given back some essential variety using simple techniques. We started by removing short sections of stone armouring that had locked the channel in place. And by the end of this film, you'll see just how we transformed that same channel to look like this. Variety and depth and current speed, as well as variety and riverbed material, gives nature so much more opportunity to thrive. But providing those opportunities for recovery involved a lot of hard work over several stages. Creating variation in depth looks easy with a machine, but if you simply dig out a pool, a river will quickly deposit material into that void and you end up back at square one. Instead, you need to use the excavated material to pinch the current so that it sweeps the new pool clean of silt and sand. Turning those pinch points into shallow sloping beaches creates extremely valuable new habitat, where before there were only vertical stone banks. You can see from the flecks of foam how the current has been squeezed and speeded up through the new, deeper pool. After the machines finished the broad brush strokes, it needed the elbow grease, labour and attention to detail that only come from people power. Groundwork West Midlands not only arranged machinery contracts and materials supply, they also drew on their volunteer day experience to run a series of habitat working days that included using environment agency staff who were given leave in order to do voluntary conservation work. The new spawning gravels were complemented by planting waterside species into newly created marginal brash habitat. This was provided to protect baby fish against predators and fierce floodwater flows. Now the spawning beds and pool habitat is fringed with vital shelter. The deeper pool upstream and the lower level of the downstream riverbed draws water through as well as over this gravel spawning bed. This is vital for good egg survival. The marginal plants will also help the baby fish to survive after they hatch. The work to create these marginal brush shelves to hold the plants securely started much earlier in the year. The river has multiple brash berms. These have been placed opposite the areas that we remove the stone armouring from the banks. Together with the regrading of the steep banks, a lot of new habitat has been created. The brook wiggles again.
gravel and wood make pools and riffles. Life is thriving. The brook is getting back its structural variety, and this really is the spice of life. Even with all this, the Lime Brook is still threatened by pollution, and trout would still need to find their way up from the main river system in order to spawn. So when I visited in November following the works, and found just one example of what could be a sign of trout breeding, I am hopeful. This work and the realisation of the Wild Trout Trust design was made possible only by the work of Lynn Morgan and Steve Cook at Groundwork West Midlands, by Becky Allen at Newcastle Underline Borough Council, and Matt Lawrence and Emma Swindale of the Environment Agency. We were brought together under the Trent Valley Partnership of the catchment-based approach.